Okay, so welcome back. I'm Jana from Pearl Together, and this is my dear friend Heidi Gillespie, and Heidi lives over in Nebraska. But back in the day, Heidi and I used to work together when we were 911 dispatchers in Laramie, Wyoming for uh, Laramie Police Fire and Medical. And so this is where Heidi and I met and where you learned to knit. Or did you, did you know before, the, did you kind of know before then or not? No, no, I had no knowledge at all of it. But we were, we were a graveyard together for that winter, mostly. Yeah. mostly. And, you know, of course, I'm knitting through the night. And you were kind of looking over. <laughs> I think you were making socks. And I was just Probably. absolutely fascinated by that. I thought that was the neatest thing I'd ever seen. And and you have big feet like me. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, you not quite not quite as big as me, but still, we talk. I remember we talked a lot about you know how much yarn would it take, <laughs> right? <laughs> I remember thinking, I don't know if I can teach you to knit because you're left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> right. But as all left-handers will tell you, they there's a lot of stuff that you learn right-handed, yeah. and that's that's how I knit. I knit right-handed. And you persevered, totally. Yeah, you did great right off the bat. I remember that whole winter, we knit, knit, knit. We yes. did, and then, you know, until something bad happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or, you know, some cop decided to pull somebody over and <laughs> us, <laughs> right? Actually make us do our job. As Imagine annoying. that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say, although I am no longer in law enforcement, you are. I so am. Heidi still is a, a 911 dispatcher in Nebraska, and that's like props to you man that's that's major you've had a, a long career that's 18 18 years yeah 18 years i still love it though love yeah, it yeah. that's fantastic and i mean what a service to your community and your department really i mean and i know what's involved and so props thank to you, you my friend thank yes. you <laughs> yes. so what so that's how you learn to knit but you know and then you and i kind of lost track for a number of years you know i i moved to oregon and you moved to colorado for a time and we both were not in wyoming right. and we kind of lost track but you know the wonders of social media right right we this found, is the good side of social media no we found each other again yeah. about a year and a half ago yeah and that was fantastic it was it was wonderful yeah and heidi came and visited and we're like oh I was, I was so excited to show you what I've been able to do with the knitting, what I've learned over the years, you know, that we, that we were not in touch. I was so excited to show you what I knew. Oh, and I want to say, <laughs> Heidi's good. Now, she, she's accomplished. And so, seriously, I don't, I don't just mean socks, but you've knitted some fantastic things. So, like, I want, I want you to show... Well, you got to show the more Vark. First of all, it's a shawl that Heidi and I started yes. at the same time. Oh. We actually spent an evening and cast on together and like worked through some of the beginning of the pattern. But yeah. then I had a problem with one of my cats doing this and I oh. had to, I had to rip mine out and you. That's tragic. I will <laughs> re-knit it. I will. Cause I love the pattern and I might have to have you, uh, if I get stuck and I forget, you'll have to like coach me through it since you've done it. If you remember. <laughs> If I remember, is it, honestly, this is up to date, the hardest thing I've ever done. The wow. hardest thing it, I've ever it, done. It was challenging, certainly. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So here's, here's the center of it. The actual. And hopefully it'll focus. See, that's just fantastic. Move it down, up and down, like slowly. See, that's fantastic. And, it, and Heidi's yarn is very dark. Yeah. So you may not be able to see it really well, but you can see that Celtic center motif that diamond motif in the middle and then it's a provisional cast on and then you carry on knitting the rest of the stole it's a long right. rectangular piece and there's wow that's see now you make me want to start mine again i am so so tickled with this but yes it's you should like it makes you want to frame it i hope you wear it i hope you wear oh, it i do i've worn it a couple times already yeah. I absolutely adore it. I'm so glad I'll, that we did that. I'll link the pattern below if people are interested. I'll I'll put the pattern below. It is not a free pattern, but it's well worth the oh, whatever it was six seven dollars. I don't know what it was. But this is this is not TV knitting as we were no, talking about. Not Netflix <laughs> knitting. No, no, no. This is like shut up. Nobody talk to me. I'm right. 
Right. Somebody I, asked me a question. I answer with the number of, you know, where I'm at on the stage. 14, 15. Right. <laughs> so I have to, th it was hilarious. I wish I would have had a video of the day, the evening that you and I started the pattern. Cause we had gone up to our family cabin in the mountains and the lighting is not great in the cabin. So we take this floor lamp, we put it behind the couch, and then we both have like headlamps, like seriously. And, we're, and we, we've got our, our knitting and our right. headlamps, and we're like, and we're and totally, I'm cussing this dark, dark colored yarn. Why did I pick black? Why? And we're like a couple little old women, like just cursing up a storm, trying to figure this out. <laughs> That was a fun weekend. That was fantastic. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so that's the most challenging thing that you, do you, what I'm curious about, and I ask a lot of people this, do you have like a, okay, so you have your like complicated knitting, like something like that, right? right. Where you, you concentrate and it's a challenge and it makes you think, it makes your brain work a little bit, but mm -hmm. then you got to have something that you take with you, you know, like in the car knitting or, right. or like church knitting. I don't know if you knit through church. I don't go to church, but I used to, and I used to knit through church because it's yeah. productive fidgeting and I actually listen and focus better when my hands are busy. Yes. Um, or like we had a 4-H event. It was a, you know, kind of a, it was achievement night. It's where they have awards and it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful program, but it's long and they're calling out a lot of names and a lot of people go to the stage and back and you know, I, you want to support that, but it's a long evening. Right. So you knit. You knit while you sit there. Right. So what's right. your go? What's your travel knitting? What's that look like? Um, you know, right now, because I'm working on on Christmas projects still. Right now, um, I am I have some um some worsted weight wool and it's just straight um uh, garter, back and garter back. stitch. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna felt it into um hot pads. Oh, okay. Everybody's, okay. everybody's going to get homemade hot pads for Christmas. So are those the long kind that have the pockets at the end? No, no. These are just rectangular. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's, cool. Well, that's, that's what it is right now. Well, this is, this is just straight wool garter stitch, 36 inch or 36 stitches wide by 76 rows. Okay. So that 76 rows or would that be 38 ridges? Yeah. Yes. So it's 36 by 38 ridges or 76 rows. Okay. Right. Oh, sweet. This is, this is what it looks like before I felt right. it. Right. And this is what it looks like after. Wow. Cool. So you have a before and after. Hold that up like you had it a second ago so we can see the rate of shrinkage. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And it makes a perfect... For for my hand, which I kind of have a big hand, it's the perfect palm size. Yeah. You know, it strikes me you could even like take two of them and felt them together and make a mitt. Yeah, you, guess you, wouldn't could. Have the thumb, you wouldn't have the thumb part though, would you? No. So, but you could make a giant mitten. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I just sort of worked that one out on my own. That's the right size to fit for me, yeah. and I. I have a front loading washer and I just throw them in there and, and it takes a little longer. I wish I had a top loader. Oh, that. I know they work better. Like <laughs> you got to take it over to like your in-laws or something. If they have, yeah. One. Yeah. You know, yeah. My mom has an older one. I like to take stuff to her house and do it at her, you know, the, yeah. you know cause she has the, the, front loading, the front loading kind is too gentle. <laughs> I know you need that top agitation thing. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes, sometimes it sucks. Because I've done enough socks, I think now that if the pattern, <laughs> if the pattern's pretty straightforward, I can just sort of wing it. Wing it, yeah. Well, and you always know. I mean, if you do the same cuff down all the time with the heel flap and gusset, then you know yeah. you don't have to look at the book. Okay. By the way, I will put this in the links below as well. The book that Heidi learned with is the same book I learned with. That's how come I brought it during the night. It was Folk Socks with Nancy Bush. And it's the classic sock pattern that's contained in that book. And I'm pretty sure that book is still available on, I think the cover's, you know, been redesigned, but I'll link that below. Great book. And there's other patterns in there as well, but that's the one we use to start with. And so I, I just, you know, after a while you memorize, you know what the formula is. Right. And you don't need to carry the little book along anymore. Yeah. Right? And I still think the two by two rib sock 
that I learned that first time. That's that's still my 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 favorite one, my go-to one. You oh, know? your go-to, yeah, for sure. You know, you've knit a lot of socks over the years, so have I. So, what what do you do with your scrappy bits? So, with the scraps, um, I have a pin loom, and I actually have two or three of them. This is what it looks like. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And um, I taught myself how to weave on a pin loom and I make these little squares with all my leftover yarn. And like I've got a stack of white ones here. And then there's one from some leftover sock yarn. Oh, wow. Okay. That's cool. And um, you know, when I get enough, I've got a bag of them here I need to do something with, but I've got like some purpley pink ones and I sort of match them together. Yeah, yeah, with the then, match the colors. Uh huh. Yeah. And then I can, um, I make like pillow covers out of them. Oh, like for your couch pillows. Right, for couch oh, pillows. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sure. And then um, one of these days when I get real ambitious and real bored, maybe I'll try to see how many I can sew together to make like a real light afghan out of them. Wow. Or something like that. So, so would it be easier to like do the mitered square? Like, have you seen the sock yarn blanket by Shelly Kang where you have like these little balls and it's, you just knit, make mitered squares and you, there's no sewing together cause you pick up the stitches as you go. Oh, like I'll link that below too, but then you, you could do it as you go and like, you don't have to sew together a bajillion little, but it's not woven and that's kind of cool because it's different. Yeah, than what you would I really you know, like the woven. It's different. it's different than what you would normally see, right? Yeah. And in fact, I've used these already to make, I think, like a little uh, project bag. Hmm. But I end up making a ton of project bags. You know, I'm always looking for, for bags to take with me to put other, you know, to put go right. products in and, and that's, I've used that. And cool I put sew, like four of those together for like, you know, or you could make a table runner. Yeah. Right? That'd be yeah. neat. Or coasters or anything, mug rugs, yeah. any of that. There's tons of stuff you could do with it. So. That's cool. I hadn't seen that. Yeah. Right on. So what do you, what are you currently, show us what you're currently working on. I know you're doing that fantastic Afghan, the twining something. Yes. Why, why are you cringing? What happened? Oh, nothing, nothing. It just is, it's a marathon project, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be months before I get it done. Do you want to see that one? I do, because okay. I think it's fantastic, and we'll put that link below, obviously. Yeah, the twining vines Afghan, that's what it is. Right. Okay. So this, I believe, is, it's on a DK yarn. Right, so not bulky. So yeah, this, oh my word. So stretch out the middle a little if you can, or so we can kind of see yep. the cable and the fantasticness that is all that. <laughs> wow. Wow, that, wow, that's not really TV knitting either. That's a fabulous green too. Oh, I love the green. Yeah, it's um, it's like a 24 row repeat and I've got, I think, eight repeats on it so far. So once you get a few chunks of it done, you start recognizing where you should be next. It gets a little easier. So, so I mean, can you do it without like checking line by line the pattern? Right. Okay, you've done it enough. Now you know what comes next. You don't have to keep looking. So, right. so maybe, you can, maybe you can watch hockey while you do it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I feel quite that brave. I don't like backing out rows. No, but. no tinking and certainly no ripping. So are you putting in lifelines or not? No, I haven't. Woo, Actually. she lives on the edge, that one. Dang, I should do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> At least put in a lifeline, like maybe <laughs> once every pattern repeat. See? Yeah, that's a really good idea. <laughs> Woo, you're living on the edge, dear. <laughs> No, this is but you said that. So what is your favorite? Like, do you have two or three favorite yarns? Like when you start a new project like the Vining Afghan and you think, ooh, I'm gonna buy some new yarn, do you always go for the same brands or or do you branch out? Like, do you always know what you want? No, I tried I like to try different yarns. 
Um, I was sort of obsessed with brown sheep yarn for a while. And that's local to us, kind of. Yeah. It's within an hour and a half of me and probably an hour or so for you. Yep, about an hour. And Brown yep. Sheep Yarn Company, you can find them online, but they have a, at their actual mill, they have a factory second store. And we, we've spent some money there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a happy place. <laughs> and the people are super nice. Oh, they are. They're so nice. They'll, they'll give you a tour of their, their factory, you know, if it's Somebody's, yep. great. Yeah, so I, I like some of their yarns too. It depends on the purpose. Yeah, um, yeah, I find their sock yarn to be a little, little thin, thinner than I normally would like to knit, and slightly splitty. Yeah, uh, but I really like their lion, lamb's pride worsted uh -huh. for felted for felted things. Yes, um, yeah, and I, their prairie spun DK, I really like that as well. Yeah, they have some lovely hand print, hand painted. Yeah, so I'll put the link for that down below too. Yeah, and but, but what uh, else? What else have you found that you've found particularly is lovely and squishy lately. Well, you know, I'm 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 currently in love with Madeline Tosh yarns and that's what that green yarn on the afghan is that I'm making is Madeline Tosh. You know, so many people talk about I have never tried it. I've never had a skein. I love Okay, it. your face yeah. is telling me I need to Yeah. It's it's good stuff. It's real good stuff. And so that's yeah, oh my word. That's a bajillion skeins for that afghan. Yeah, I think it's like 20 21 22 skeins i got an extra one so 22 skeins yeah so is it is it merino or what what is it is it a blend uh yeah this is a super wash merino that i have so it is going to be washable i was going to say yes. is it blanket like washable yes i i want to put all that time and effort into it and not be able to i mean i'll be very careful with it i'm going to wash it on delicate but i want to be able to throw it in the washer well, especially if like, you know, your husband's watching hockey and spills something, you're like, oh, that'd be horrifying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, but we're going to, I definitely want it to be used, you know, that's, that's yeah. not, not going to be for looking at. But you want it to be cared for well. Sure. Right. Absolutely. Right. Talking about the yarns you love, what is your least favorite yarn? Like, um, are you one of these people that will actually knit with, you know, like the foofy, crazy novelty yarns like boucle and like the things that have the hairs on it and stuff? Um, you know, other than this mohair project that I'm working on, no, I, I'm not really. You're not a foofy kind of, no, I mean, I know that about you. I knew you wouldn't be. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a crazy yarn kind of girl. The yarn that I hate more than anything is boucle you know that has the strand and then there's the loopy business that comes off it and i have knit with that like there's some it's called lion brand homespun that's what i've done yeah i've used that too and i have too because it was given to me it was like a church lady where somebody's like oh here you're a knitter take this whole bag and i'm like <laughs> no you're being nice right because it's right sure well it's wonderful for them to think of you but i'm like <laughs> they don't know they don't know any better they don't know that that's horrid to knit with Yes, it is terrible. It's terrible. And so I knitted a shrug kind of thing for a gift for someone else. And it's very soft and it was great when I was done, but it was a bitch to knit. I hated every sec. I mean, <gasps> oh, yeah. 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 I shouldn't even say that on the heels of one of my other podcasts. Well, like <laughs> knitting should make you happy. You shouldn't knit with things you hate. But I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't at the time. Well, and then once you start, you've got an idea, you've got the pattern, you just want to, you want to finish it. You want to see it through. But now, I probably wouldn't. But yeah, then, I probably but... wouldn't know either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I got to agree with you there. That boucle stuff is... Hateful. Super frustrating. Mm -mm. Super, super frustrating. Okay, so, and you know we've talked about this before, like, frogging things that you dislike. Frogging things that have no longer served their purpose. Maybe you learned whatever you needed to learn from that, and you're ready to be done. You're ready to move on. You've had whatever this is in the corner for God knows how long. <laughs> I know you have something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, so, I do. I, I have, know you came prepared. So I did, I did, and I've got. I found a, a cardigan pattern that I really liked, and I went to Brown Sheep Company and I bought yarn for it. And this is so. This is lovely brown sheep, kind of a mul mauve or mulberry uh, variegated. And look at all those cables. 
they're 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 not real cables okay they're faux cables. well still they're yeah. still you got to pay attention but i i knitted you knitted in in panels and then um you whip stitch it together and as i'm knitting the sleeves um i knit them flat and then i you stitch them together and i'm i tried them on as i went along i'm like okay okay we're good okay we're good okay we're good <laughs> and i sew them together and it's like not good it could fit a gorilla's arms maybe you know they're super duper super duper long <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> it's like it covers my hands and about probably six inches more oh my word so they're more like orangutan arms yeah yeah wow yeah but, so were they knitted i mean you knitted them from the bottom up i mean can you can you frog like can you take it off like remove it from the body of the sweater and then you know rip out like five inches and then put it back on well that's <laughs> or do you even want to attempt that I, I i that's what i was gonna do at first but this this yarn is really i don't know maybe i did an extra good job of sewing it in i can't really see you can't find it, it. yeah yeah you know? you'd have to cut it you know and then if you cut it and then you damage the body part right not this and so i thought well i'll just rip it from the bottom up and then i can be sure that it's the right but ripping it from the bottom up you can't really rip that direction it doesn't work it doesn't work no it because then you're work. picking it out you're not unraveling you're picking yeah and that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at that's this is how much i need to rip out i've ripped out about half so far pain just picking it out yeah and it's yeah. That's picking, that's not ripping or tearing. Oh, it doesn't unravel properly. Super frustrating. super frustrating. And then I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna how am I gonna close it off when I'm done? How am I gonna fix it? Right. Right. right? You can't do a bind off. You'd have to sew it somehow sewn. You would have to pick it up like a provisional cast on knit the other direction and then do a bind off. So I think I think what I'm gonna do is an epic frog yeah oh, she's gonna yeah. rip us right just rip it i am i'm gonna oh. righteously rip this the whole thing away yeah maybe so maybe Is so this? oh so okay so if and you were to completely do that, redo the sleeves both of them you know and then so, sew them back in okay so you're not gonna rip the whole sweater no no i don't think i'm gonna have to rip the whole sweater i'm gonna have to gonna have to really sit down and you know that the wrong side of this looks like the right side that's the inside of the sweater right because you're that's the background for your cables right the pearl, the pearl background on the other side for your cables right so your fake I, cables yeah i don't know if you can see it very well on here or not yeah but the seam it's just where I tucked it in, I don't know. I can't, I can't find it for the life of me, but I'm going to figure it out. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you need a good light. You need a good alt light and yeah. then like, you know, clean the progressives. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's, or, that's you know, what I have to do because I like the sweater. This will be basically like a winter coat for me. It's so yeah. Yeah. thick and, and squishy and wonderful. And I'm not willing to. See, you love it. So it's I probably do. worth. Yeah, if, it's worth it. It's worth the time to fix it so so you'll love it again. Right. Yeah, right. I tried to do it the the quick and easy way and that's not going to work. It's not going to work. No, and the 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 sleeve that you picked at you you're probably going to have to frog the whole sleeve just re-knit the sleeves, right? Okay. Right, yeah, for both of them that's what I'm going to have to do. And I honestly I think what I'm going to do is probably knit them in the round next Why time. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean I followed the pattern. I always end up doing that. I follow the pattern and then after I'm done, I'm like, why couldn't I have just done it this way? It would have been so much easier. But now you know that. Yeah. And next time when you knit a sweater, you'll be like, no, I'll just do it in the round. It's so much easier. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Like this twining vine afghan that I'm, that I'm making, they recommend you do it in panels and then sew the panels together. And I'm like, oh, no. No, 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 Hell no. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it's working out great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do they think that maybe you don't have a long enough cable? I or you don't have a long enough, maybe that, I don't know. Or maybe people don't want that much weight on their lap. You know, I mean, I could see, I guess, but I would hate sewing. I would hate that. I would not like to sew all that together. Yeah, I mean, knitters don't like to do that, right? 
They just don't want the, the Not anymore. Yeah. Maybe in the seventies they put up with that. <laughs> because nope. that's like all they had were the bamboo sticks now. Or the metal. Like I've got <laughs> some of my grandmother's metal right. needles and they're like, you know, fifteen inches and that's it. Right? Right. I don't think right. they made back back then when some of these patterns were written, like the Vogue magazine I have from the eighties. Mm-hmm. Well, I have several old, old ones, but you know, they didn't have the 60 inch cables They're like they make now with interchangeable, yeah. you know, they didn't have all that. So yeah. they've kind of written patterns in panels just because they didn't have the tools that afforded them the luxury of knitting it all at once. That's yeah. my theory. I bet you're right. So you're working on the Afghan. That's a long, that's a long project. Mm-hmm. You've got the mo. Tell me about the mohair thing. The mohair thing. The mohair thing. Because we're talking about yarn that, yeah. that maybe, yeah. So the pattern, where did I get the pattern? It's a craftsy pattern. It's called the Obsessio Cowl. Okay. I'll link that below if I can find it. It's just a real okay. feathery. Oh, it is. It's like cobwebby. Yeah. Shit. It reminds yeah. me of cotton candy. Yeah. It's. And this this yarn no, is when you say cowl, it's like a I couldn't tell really from the picture because the color on my webcam's not great. But is it up? Is it like this and then it goes down, like it, a cowl, and then it goes down some? Right. Or yeah, yeah. I mean, in this in the picture, she's wearing it around her shoulders. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But yeah. So it's like a shrug almost, not a. There's another picture I think where it's where she's wearing it like an actual cowl. Okay, so this is not, this is an accessory that's lovely, but not meant to keep you warm, really, because it's so lacy and foofy. Yes, ethereal and ephemeral. That's the word, that's the word. Not like, yeah, see, that's better than foofy, but yeah, you know what I meant. Yeah, so. So what uh, color is yours? Mine is kind of a burgundy red. Wow. And just this tiny little bit is going to make that entire thing. So, because that's like not even lace weight, that's like cobwebby. Yeah. Yeah. So oh my word. Oh my word. And this is, hang on. There's a, I've got a provisional cast on it. Yeah. The right. And then. Wow. I can see you through that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's just really pretty, you know? It is lovely, but you hate it? <laughs> but I hate working. I learned that I hate working with mohair. I do. I'm probably never ever going to do it again. Is it? Do you hate it because it's too it's too fine and hairy? Um. And I'm using what size are the needles I'm using on it? Like probably help. three or four, maybe. No, no, it's uh. You know that while you're looking that up, that reminds me of like people that that do very very fine like tatting and they make those doilies that are very tiny with the aunt lydia's white cotton thread and they're just you know and then they starch them and it's very i mean i totally respect the effort and it's just lovely i mean it's beautiful work is mm-hmm. this something that i want to do well no not really yeah so this is a ten and a half needle. oh my word that's why it's so light and open and airy you know and the yarn overs are just massive holes <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be it's yeah. supposed to be like that. Yeah. So, and that's that's the that's the biggest contrast I've ever done too, you know, with big needles and tiny, tiny yeah. just webby yarn. Wow. But what I don't like about it, um and I uh is is that it sticks to itself. Oh and I'm sure it's easy to get it tangled. Yes, yes. And if you get a knot in this stuff, good luck. Oh hell no. Good luck getting it out. You're never gonna get it out. And somebody told me that if you freeze it, it doesn't stick to itself quite so much. I would have never thought. Hey, okay, so here's a thought. What if you freeze it and then you knit it two strands together? Maybe not that pattern, but like but to, if you like the way the yarn feels, like if you like it because it's oh, very and, soft and, and it's wow. lovely. Okay, so here's my, I'm just brainstorming because I like, I've never knitted with that. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I admit, I don't know what I'm talking about. But here's a brainstorm for you. What if you stick it in the freezer and you've got it in a cake, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if this would work, but let's say you, did you wind that? Do you have a ball winder? I do. Okay. 
So what if you put it in the freezer, then you separate it into two cakes while it's frozen and you can work it. Then you take those two cakes and put them back in the freezer until, and then you knit a cowl for yourself holding two strands together so you can have it come off the cakes, you know, simultaneously. Right. And you knit yourself something that you would like that's even just a straight up garter stitch cowl just because it's mohair and it's so lovely, right? Mm -hmm. Lovely. What yeah. if you made yourself or a lovely scarf that you would like, but it's not such a bitch to knit, and you can have two to hold two together from your simultaneous frozen cupcakes? <laughs> That's a good idea. It's a thought. Let me yeah. know what you decide to do with that. Okay. But so you've decided for sure you're gonna like frog that and um or are you just gonna cut it and burn it? <laughs> <laughs> She's like you're just gonna get the big scissors. Put the rest in the freezer, <laughs> cut that sucker, and put it in the wood stove, and be like, yeah. it never happened. <laughs> I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with it yet. All right. Maybe, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll make something a lot less complicated. The, but that you would really enjoy just because it's so soft next to your skin. Yeah. Yeah. Would you wear a beanie? Oh, sure. So could you hold two strands together? If you hold two strands together of that, is it remotely close to a light fingering? Or is it still too no? no. It'd still be it'd still be a pre it'd still be a stretch to make it lace weight then. So it's not even a beanie worthy. Okay, so it needs to be a scarf. Yeah, it's gonna have to be something. How much yardage is there? Oh, I don't even remember anymore. The I one... wonder if you'd have enough holding it together. Would you have like four hundred yards you could make a little Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, or a scarf. Just a scarf that you can wind 14 times around your neck that you'd love. <laughs> yeah. Just because it's small hair and it's soft. It's uh, about, it's just over 300 yards. You could do a good scarf with 150 yards if you held that double. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you'll have to let us know if you do the frozen cupcake idea. Okay. I mean, I'm going to try it out and we'll see if that helps. That's a fabulous idea. Whoever told you that, that's a great idea. What are your favorite, do you have any favorite knitting podcasts that you listen to or watch on YouTube? Um, well, I like yours. Duh. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's because you're one of my oldest friends. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> but no, I do appreciate that because I respect your, respect your judgment as a knitter. I mean, oh. you're, you're really accomplished and that's not due to me i taught you the basics and then you spent the last 17 years just doing your thing that's fabulous it, it is it is on you though that is that is 100 percent on you i would never have gotten into it if it weren't for you well so yeah you. absolutely you and and your mother your mother gets credit too because that's right she gave me a little starter kit that's right that's yeah. right I remember that that's yeah. so cool she says yeah. hello by the way <laughs> oh cool so what else have you like do you watch the grocery girls i think they're i like, do i do watch them <laughs> i think they're super funny i like yeah. i like them a lot i'm really behind now they're yeah. on like episode 60 whatever and i'm super behind yeah I'm very, I'm very behind i've watched i've watched a few of their episodes but i do i do like them i like i like to watch them very much so i like to talk about netflix knitting and that could be hulu or movies or whatever but like Heidi and I were talking about this the other day. Heidi watches stuff I would never watch because I am such a wuss. I mean, I get, I, I don't know. I don't watch scary things. I don't watch zombie things. I don't watch things that would scare the crap out of me. <laughs> no. And it's, uh-uh, no. Yeah. yeah. So what can you recommend that's not in the horror genre? Because <laughs> we always talk about this on podcasts. And that's kind of fun because people like, you know, people always like to get recommendations for good you know, Netflix knitting, right? Okay, so um, not horror, not horror, not horror. Um, there is, uh, well, in sports, can I recommend sports? Sure. Yeah, I mean that's something I don't necessarily have to pay a whole heck of a lot of attention to, you right. know, right. while I'm knitting or vice versa. So I like to watch hockey and uh football college football specifically i don't knit generally when i'm watching uh college volleyball because that's too stressful <laughs> <laughs> i remember we were talking one of the stories you told me about you were over at your family or your in-laws or somebody was it your brother or matt's brother <sighs> when 
you were working on something. You had one of those row click, 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 click thing. That, yeah. Tell that story because I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> so I have a, a row counter that's in, it's a red rectangular row counter that doesn't have a lock on it. <laughs> row, right? And I was sitting beside my brother-in-law on the couch and I had uh, one of my project Afghans. He will not be named. Not that he's going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll never watch it. <laughs> I might link it to him. He may somehow mysteriously get a link. But anyway. Um, with the correct minute, with the correct minute of the YouTube, so he can go right to the point where he's mentioned. <laughs> so I'm, we're sitting, he's sitting beside me on the couch. I get up to go out to the kitchen to get another glass of water or whatever. And I set my knitting down and I was with stood the out clicky. with the clicky on top. So I would lose <laughs> it, right? And um, I got up and went out to the kitchen and I stood out there for a few minutes and talked to a couple other people and I come back out and here's, here's my brother-in-law, Scott, just going click, 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 click. <laughs> He's like fascinated <laughs> with it. Like it's a toy. Oh gosh. And I, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and you want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, what is this? I'm like, it's a row counter. Oh. Yeah, he gets his. <laughs> <laughs> Did it like dawn on him the gravity of what he had done? No, not at first. Not at first. I'm like, it's a row cutter. He's like, for what? For my knitting? Do you remember what number it was on? <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of those, one of those, um, I think, it, like I said, I think it was another Afghan that I was making. <laughs> well, it's like a 30 row repeat, you know. <laughs> Do you, do you have any idea? I mean, that's why I have a row counter. So I don't think <laughs> what row I'm on, right? I'm halfway through a row. Okay, I'm let's specify. Repeat. Let's specify for the viewers. This is your brother-in-law. My because brother-in-law. would know better. <laughs> oh, he would sure. know. He would oh, know not to sure. touch it. <laughs> he and knows exactly what it is, and he has no interest in touching it. He to knows. his credit, was he in the room when this occurred? No. Or would Matt, would your husband have stopped the shenanigans? He would have. He would, he would have. have said, dude, don't touch that. <laughs> She's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't have allowed that to happen because he knows how, how uptight or upset that would make me. <laughs> but right. The so, look on his face was so funny, though. I'm sure it was. So we were talking the other day about how one would go about fixing something like that or determining that. I, I was talking on the a video I made just recently about like tinking techniques and like if something like that happens, how you would go about fixing that or discovering where you were. So if something like that were to happen to me after I was done dealing with the culprit right. and I had hidden the body. <laughs> I had hidden the body, exactly. Right. <laughs> I would probably, I would start tinking back, writing down the stitches I had taken out and then I would go back on the chart to see what matched up or the written instructions or whatever, you know what I mean? I would tink back writing down what I'd taken out and then go back to the pattern and try to match up what I'd written down with the pattern. Is that what you did? Um, or did you just- yeah, I took it back to the beginning of the row. Right. Um, and then I, what I did was I, you know, I, like, like on this Afghan, I just stretched it out and sort of, I the had term. a- you know, I knew I was somewhere about halfway through a repeat, right, right? Roughly halfway through a repeat. Yeah. And I had done enough repeats that I was fairly confident that I would recognize it. So I just took it and I just sort of stretched it out and started counting, you know? Yeah. Okay. okay. So this particular one, you know, this particular piece of the pattern, I know that it's going to be two right decreases a couple of yarn overs and then yeah, you know yeah. and just sort of tried to match it up to the pattern and and i remember i remember now i was on row 16. <laughs> now you remember okay hmm. has this has this in-law ever touched your knitting since <laughs> he won't even sit by me anymore <laughs> While I'm knitting, <laughs> that's nothing to do with it. Okay, well, he learned his he lesson. He felt terrible. He felt terrible. He just I, oh, I'm sure. Like, I'm yeah. sure. And you got to <laughs> give him credit. He's learned his lesson, right? And he's probably never done any of that again. He's like, no, that's not mine. Don't touch. That's not mine. 
He just, you know, fidgety, click, click, click. <laughs> you know what? Like, you should buy him one of his own. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll get that in his stocking this year. <laughs> With a link to the podcast. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> so what's next on your knitting list? Like, after Christmas is done, after you've done the gift knitting... For those people that you feel are knit worthy, that's another topic. Yeah. How, what's next on your list of projects? Like, I mean, the Afghan is ongoing, so I get that. Right. The orangutan sweater needs to be fixed, <laughs> and the mohair thing needs to go in the freezer for a timeout. Right. Yes. So, so what's next for you then? What's next? Um, I just brought a pattern up. I am going to make a, a felted purse actually oh. yeah and it's kind of an older pattern but i'm gonna make a felted purse and it's got little it's got a, some button detail on the front of it and okay is it yeah. does it have cables um i saw one recently that had a couple of wooden buttons that had a cable like a viking motif on the front it was super cool oh neat no this, this one doesn't have cables it's just got um it'll be like garter stitch and then there'll be some reverse stockinette so that when you felt it it'll leave panels like that right right this i got online i do have a bunch of their magazines but it is the formal boot bag oh cool all right and so then will you purchase like the handle or the strap for it or will you make knit knit a strap and felt that as well no i don't i don't want to do that i've done that before and those end up with all the all the garbage I carry around in a purse, <laughs> like stretch it all out. It gets too stretched, so I'll buy one. I'll buy a, a backpack hand. then. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but yeah, and this and, and I don't know if you can see from the picture, but only the outside panels are felted, and then this part is not felted. Oh no, I can't tell from the picture, but that would be cool. Oh, yeah. those buttons. Okay, they're buttons on there, not bobbles. Right. Okay. Buttons. Right. Yeah. So that's my next project. Cool. So you have to, do you already have the yarn for that then? No. Not yet. Awesome. Not yet. A good excuse to order stuff. Yeah. And this is, like I said, from Interweave uh, from 2007. Yeah. I'll put a link down below. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Right. So that'll keep you busy. That won't take very long to make though, I wouldn't think. No, I wouldn't think so. But it's not TV knitting because it's shaping. Yes. What do you have that's TV knitting? TV knitting. Um, well, the hot pads right now. Yeah, the hot pads right now. After I've the always, holidays. I'm always going to, uh, it seems like I'm always working on a pair of socks though. Yes. You know, my, my daughter is 18 years old and her feet are almost as massive as mine. <laughs> and every time I make a pair of socks, they seem to end up in her sock drawer. Imagine that. Yeah. So I keep, doggone it, have to keep making more socks. I know. I need to start another one. I've got some uh, just movie knitting. Well, I told you about the shawl that I've started. It's going to be a scrappy thing, but I have this. Sock, I've got the sock head hat. It's just a beanie made with sock yarn. Super easy. That's really good for Netflix knitting, movie knitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to do socks while I'm watching TV. Yep. Yeah. Like that. Awesome. Well, I'm really glad you came on the podcast. I'm like honored that you. Uh, you know, one of the people I, I told you that wanted me to such a long time ago. It's really, it's cool that we caught back up finally. And that yeah. I was so happy that you'd stuck with it, that you were still knitting. And then you showed me some of the things you'd done. I was like, oh, oh my word. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're not just knitting vanilla. I mean, you're like challenging yourself. I think it's great. Yeah. It's fantastic. So, and Heidi's in our group too. So you can catch her there. If, do you usually put your stuff on Ravelry? If you want, I'll, put your Ravelry project page down. Um, no, I really, I really haven't done that. I need to do that. I really haven't done that. That's all right. That's all right. It's kind of fun though, just because, well, for one, one thing, when we share in the group, if you just link to your Ravelry project page, then if people want to know what it is, like all the details are there, the yarn, oh. the pattern, the needles, all the stuff's there. So it's easy to link to, to share mm -hmm. your work with other people. Um, and like I put a bunch, I keep track of things that way. If I'm like, oh, I knit that pattern before. Wait, what did I, what yarn did I use for that? What needle did I use for that? And I'll go back and look. So oh. it's a catalog for myself as well. So 
I like it for that. So, all right. Well, let us know if you do update your Ravelry stuff, and then we'll put a link down below with that. But if not, you're you're around. You're around in the group. Yep. All right. You can always message me or whatever. Cool. All right. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah, thanks.